So, hmm, you guys, this episode, I would say that it was more like mixed emotions. They had like really cute moments, like family type moments. And then they also had like a fight where they went low, like low, low, low. They did not booga. They only went low. So yeah, it was just mixed emotions. Then a party was thrown. Faith had her birthday party and all of that. So let's just get into the episode and I'm going to give you guys all the tea. Welcome back to my channel, guys. If you are new here, please do subscribe. Turn on your post notifications so that I can get notified each time I post a brand new video. And do not forget to give this video a thumbs up. So at the beginning of this episode, we had Miriam and Yabo. Miriam took Yabo for a spa date, just a regular spa date. And of course, at the end of the day, they started talking about all that had happened so far. You guys know that Yabo was not at Tanya's event. She was on her vacation. So Miriam was just talking to her about like the issues between the issues she had with Choma. And then Yabo told her that, Omo, I don't like this whole fake thing that you keep saying that. She doesn't like the fact that she called them fake. That has her own issue with Miriam, right? Miriam was saying, hey, I didn't really call you guys fake. I only said it's a fakery for me. And then Yabo told her that it still doesn't make sense because this is someone that had issues with some of the housewives in season one. And right now she's cool with them. Nobody's questioning her own relationship or calling her fake. So why would she now refer to another um like the other housewife's relationship as fake so at this point miriam now admitted that you know she sees where they are coming from and she sees where she may have done something wrong and all of that and then at the end of the day she now mentioned that herself and choma later made up and they danced together right and i saw that part i saw when they danced together and i mentioned it in my other video so now we had a pretty emotional session with Tony, where she was talking to her friend about her neck issues she also mentioned that she has been having health issues since she had her son tenor that she has just been having like different health challenges and all of that this is when she now spoke about her mom and how her mom passed away she said her mom had cancer and that the symptoms her mom was experiencing is what she's experiencing that she spoke about um she spoke about what she's experiencing with her leg that is the same the similar symptoms that her mom was having and all of that and that she has a surgery that she's supposed to undergo that will keep her from working for three good months you guys it was a crazy session she was just expressing hot she also she also said that She's not happy about the fact that her mom is not here to like reap the fruits of her labor. Just seeing all that she has achieved so far, her mom is not here to enjoy all of that with her because she said her mom was not really like um, so well to do. So she would have really liked to um, spoil her, everything. Just that thing of your mom being there to see your children, see everything that's going on with you. And then she also said her mom passed away at the age of 46. That's really young. So now she's 41. She's now scared that having these symptoms, having these health challenges, what is going to happen? Is she going to, you know, just that thought of going early or leaving her kids and not being able to like provide for them. She was just expressing. She even got teary at some point. It was just very like um, emotional. So the lady was just consoling her, just telling her that she's strong, that, you know, she's going to be fine, what is going to happen to her. And it's it's cool that she was able to express herself, be vulnerable. It takes a lot for someone to just say everything that's doing them. And then we had Faith. Faith went to meet with her designer. She went with her brother and her stepsister's sister, right? She said that we're not going to understand the relationship. But when she said, that, when she said it, I'm like, isn't your stepsister's sister? supposed to also be your stepsister but then since um she said it that way maybe the stepsister sister is also a stepsister to her stepsister <laughs> oh well you guys let's just leave it at that she said she went the person she went with is her stepsister sister so she, then she went to them to go see her designer and the clothes that her designer made for her just for them to just vet it and just see how it looks and stuff so she came out with the clothes and then of course the clothes had an attachment to it this fit so there's always going to be something flowing from her clothes so she had that she came out the clothes was nice they liked it and then later on he left the guy left it was now herself and her stepsister sister they were not talking about their family and the fact that their parents don't agree right but they've tried to not let that affect their own relationship so it was just about Okay, our parents don't agree, but let's still keep this relationship going. Just that, you know, family type moment. So the beginning part was mostly like 
the um the different housewives in their individual um capacity or just doing their thing right that's even the last episode we had that same situation where the beginning part was just okay showing this person their family showing this person their family and just family time this season in general has a lot to do with like family outside issues not just the housewives coming together to plan events after events you sit down plan another one as you're planning that one talking about that one you say who is hosting the next event and then the next one you say who is hosting the next event so this one has more depth and i like that i like the way it's going now i understand why most of their taglines have family in it so it's like um family oriented and family this family that i guess maybe that's why they have that because this episode this is this season first say this episode this season has a lot to do with family things right and then tanya had a book reading event and this was supposed to be another like family time with the ladies and everything only for it to turn into something else towards the end and i was like okay you guys had to do this at this kind of event right so let's just uh, when we get to that we're going to talk about it so the ladies that came we had choma choma came with her niece um laura came with her daughter miriam came with her daughter and then we had tanya and her daughter right so the book that tanya wrote she now um you know gathered them they were in their car type of thing this small just a nice boot where she now ready for them and she read the book out for them the children listened or they did not and then after that they now went on to play of course if there's no playground then why are you bringing children together so they went on to play they had the bouncing castle and then other games and that's when the ladies now gathered to have their own ladies time and that's where issues now started happening so when they gathered um or when they were together talking tanya told miriam that she had some things that she needed to let off her chest she spoke about her event she said that miriam ordered some extra drinks and she now had to get charged for it that she wasn't really happy about and she wasn't happy about that now it turned out that miriam actually paid for the drinks that she ordered and she had the receipts to show for it like she came there with her receipts there's nothing as sweet as having like receipts for everything that is going on so she had a receipt with her to show that okay these are the drinks that i ordered and these are um this is my payment receipt and everything and it was 2.1 million naira you guys people have money you yeah she ordered dom Perignon and you know i think azula so and when she was showing the receipts laura was just there shocked like hey you know so um she showed her receipt and Choma was now questioning the receipt. She was just looking at it like, hmm, this receipt is not, it was not this particular day. It was not on the seventh. Miriam told her that she should look well, that she should not look at the message. Because I think she showed them a WhatsApp chat or something. That she should not look at the message. She should look at the date on the receipt, right? With the way Choma was behaving, I'm suspecting that she already had this conversation with Tanya before now. Because it almost seemed like she did not expect that Miriam had like receipts or proof or anything or that that was how everything was going to go, right? Because she's like, hmm, this receipt, you know, are you sure? And then she was now very quiet after she had figured that, okay, Miriam had the right receipt. So I think that they had the conversation before then. And you guys know that Shoma and Miriam had an issue in the last episode. So it's like maybe they now um, said they were going to face Miriam or talk to her about this at that event and they were not expecting it to um turn out so they were not expecting it to happen like that so tana just ended up um saying that you know she understands it now she just heard things from miriam's angle and she gets it she also showed them her own receipts that's where she was also built so i guess maybe they built the both of them or something which yeah they're going to sort out later but she showed miriam and she told miriam that okay that she wanted to thank her she presented it she presented it like the reason she wanted to know was because she wanted to thank her like if she ordered something for her on her day she's supposed to thank her so she now told her thank you and everything i said okay so now they now moved on to the whole fake talk they started off by talking about laura's situation and how miriam did the instigation or like telling them not to talk to her and all of that Miriam was now explaining how everything went down. She said that Laura was just being very troublesome in season one. And, you know, every, every event, Laura will be causing trouble. So she told them that if they ignore her, that she's going to stop all this nonsense that she's doing. Now, I get what Miriam is saying. Like, based on in season one, Laura had issues with a lot of people. And then she gave attitude a lot, right? 
but the way she was saying it was just very somehow right so she said she referred to laura as like this one people like this more like people like this if you ignore them that they're going to stop this um, bullshit that they let, let me just say how she said it she was like she told the ladies that people like this that's laura people like this that you don't need to answer them that if you ignore them if you ignore someone like laura that you're going to bring the person down to level one and they're going to realize that the they're not taking any of her bullshit they're not um tolerating any bullshit that she's bringing and then um she's going to apologize that's what she said it. laura and um, laura was just there sitting down she was not saying anything i was like ha laura this piece this is really peace season because i know that she would have responded i would have responded because you're not about to like just be saying it like that it's not as if everybody else was like innocent and all of that right so laura was not really saying so much so she she now said in her confessional sha that's laura that Ryan was nice to her at the event i be at the at the dubai trip that miriam was nice to her so like that's the main issue here right so chama mentioned that the issue on ground is you mentioned that we are going to do this and then you now go behind their back and you're being all nice to laura and everything that is the two-facedism <laughs> that is how that she was two-faced and miriam was now saying she's not two-faced that was she supposed to go and meet chama and tell her that oh i'm going to talk to laura and all of that chama said okay that's not my this is not even really so much of an issue to me that's the issue i have that's chama the issue she said she, the issue she had is the fact that Miriam was now calling them fake. That if Miriam did not refer to them as fake, that all of this would have not come up. That Miriam was referring to them as fake. When she's doing something like that, you can't be calling me fake when you are doing the most, right? So that's what even like brought up the whole, uh, that's what made it a serious issue, right? She now said that um, she just wants her to stop being a rat. The next thing Miriam goes, eh, don't ever call me that. She went out to her that I didn't call you a rat. I only said the situation is ratty, which was funny because... This whole time when they've been telling uh, Miriam, oh, you called us fake, that did not make sense. She was like, no, I didn't, say, I didn't call you fake. I only said, it's the fakery for me. So Chama is like, okay, you are being ratty. It's a ratty situation. So it was just quite funny because that was like, she was just using what Miriam did, like training back at her. Then also, um, Laura actually told Miriam that she doesn't know the relationship that herself and Chama has and whatever conversation that they had before they all saw that you know how can she be saying that and it's been a year a whole year so like what are you expecting from them miriam now said that eh, if the situation did not happen with that other lady would they be kiki kakain that's what she said would they be kiki 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 kakain and then um laura was like of course she just like faced her like of course they will be having a good relationship and chema also said the same thing and i'm sure miriam was talking about um toy and she was implying the whole the enemy of my enemy is my friend kind of thing like uh maybe because toy now had an issue with chema and um, laura was not so cool with toy and then that's why they now became friends kind of thing and then they now called yabo on phone right um uh, miriam told chama that she has been planning for her that chama has been planning to call for her that yabo said that chama already had her in mind at the epe trip that chama wanted to call for her there that's when they now called yabo to confirm the whole thing and then yabo said that she told miriam that she herself that's yabo um was was going to address miriam at the epe thing that she didn't say that chama was involved right so now they stood up to leave and the argument continued and chama and yabo they were now back on the call that's when miriam now faced yabo she was telling yabo that uh, she's not one of her dogs i say yeah she told yabo that she's not one of her dogs she now told her to f you that she's not a liar right she just called she more like she was calling yabo a liar that she's not one of her dogs this and that and that i was like damn so the housewives are actually like viewing this thing the way um a lot of viewers are seeing it because from the viewers angle it's almost like yabo is like the would i say mother hen or like the mother superior that now has her minions and all of that so for miriam to be saying that that means that she perceives it that way that yabo is like the um i think mother hen <laughs> Or what else superior is like the best way for it so she just said that and then they now left that vicinity they were now still going out and they were not done with their fight i said what's even going on here at this point chema was now up close and personal with miriam they were just talking and then chema was like all up in her face and you know talking to her and then miriam in her confession and said then eh, is chema trying to get physical with me in front of the kids and all of that even though i did not perceive it as getting physical i think it was just that thing where it's like or you know talking in someone's face and everything i don't think that there was any intention to be physical like was she gonna fight there 
I don't know, but I didn't see that. That's not what I saw from what the what they showed us, right? So the next thing, um, the kids were now coming. They were done with their play. Now, when Miriam was leaving, she now made a statement, you guys. Miriam literally told Shoma that she doesn't have kids. That is why she's comfortable doing all of these things in front of the children. Hey, you guys. How do you say that to somebody? So, Chama just heard that and in fact, eh, her whole mood just changed immediately. You just know that someone is actually just poured with cold water. She was just weak. And then Yabona asked Chama what um, Miriam said. At this point, she now referred to Miriam as like the prostitute. Like, you know, this is what Miriam said and then called her a prostitute. And then in Miriam's confessional, they now showed where she was like, oh, that Chama called her a prostitute. That Chama that, has, that goes around sleeping with married men and um, Yahoo boys. I say God. It just kept going, going, going. And then she now said that um, at least she's married. Um, that she married a white man. But then at least she's married. She's building her her institution she's building an institution and she doesn't go around um hiring people to be her boyfriends implying that maybe Choma, the boyfriends that she's bringing to the show they're hired or something like yo she was just she just kept going and at this point she did not leave her. she did not leave the she was going down already i don't even know why she even still came up she now still came up and then Chema was now saying that you have said what you wanted to say, just you know, get out. And then Miriam said she's not leaving. Da, 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 da. After some time, Chema was like, let her just leave it that you know the kids are here, that they would like to set good example and everything. So she didn't want to like retaliate or do anything. She said, let her just leave it. So that's how the whole thing now ended there, right? The next thing they showed was Chema and Yabo. Um Chema went to visit Yabo. Obviously, they were going to talk about this particular issue because that kind of thing can really be very hurtful. So she was expressing how hurt she was to Yabo about what Miriam said. You know, just talking about this whole thing of like, um, because not because she um, doesn't have her own kids. That's why like Miriam would be saying that kind of thing. Like you don't say that to people. That she was there with her niece. And this is someone that she also cares about that is important to her. So not because it's, um, her niece is not a biological child. Then you think that she's not supposed to set a good example. Or she's not supposed to behave well or like... You know, that's not something you just tell people, right? And then she just kept going that she takes care of a lot of children. That because she doesn't have a biological children. And then this is what Miriam is saying. So she was just, just saying things. And you you could tell that she was really, really, really hurt. And in fact, she, even, she also teared up at this point. And then Yabo was now consoling her. Yabo definitely wasn't like with Miriam on this one. Obviously, like who... He don't do that. Like that was that's that was really like low of Miriam. And what even made it more crazy is the fact that Miriam is in a situation and she mentioned that herself and her husband have been trying for over three years or so to have another child and it has not worked. That's why they opted for another method. And you're now using this against someone. Ah, no, no, nah, no, no jail. It doesn't make any sense to me. I don't think that. That was the right way to go of all things to use not that and you know that this is something that this person desires so much you know you know you know you know jig let me use brian's um term so she was just expressing that yeah but also said that miriam has spiritual problems <laughs> and after that we now had laura and faith laura went to pick her wedding rings they went to send tracy to pick wedding rings her white wedding rings you guys know that she mentioned at the beginning of this uh, this season that she and her husband they want to do a proper white wedding right so they went to pick her ring faith was just there to like vet the whole thing because faith is a diamond girl and she wanted to make sure that you know laura gets the best she even went with her tester and everything to just make sure say everything go well and then you know they just did the normal picking so okay at some point laura was talking to faith about what happened between um miriam and chioma so faith was now saying that she's sure that raccoon started it so that's referring to miriam i say hey this raccoon is not going away anytime soon so um laura was now saying that she feels bad for miriam that she doesn't want miriam to be in the same situation that she was in in season one where everyone is just like having an issue with her faith was now saying that she doesn't have a problem with her that if you give something you're gonna get something in return and then sometimes you get more than you give and everything that laura is a friend she should maybe talk to her about it or something but that she doesn't have an issue with her it's just as you give now so you go collect 
for those ones, she was just concerned about like not um Miriam just not being in the same situation she was in, just being isolated and you know, just having issues with everybody and, and all of that, right? Uh talk to Miriam now. Let Miriam <laughs> calm down too. And if you go for people like that, obviously they're going to um, carry it in their mind. So, you know, they just finished that. They finished with the ring, they used the tester to test it. It was good. And then um, the next thing they showed us was Tony and Miriam. They went to a game center, a virtual, virtual reality game center. This scene, I mean, this part was very funny. They had a lot of funny things that happened there. So first of all, these people were not ready for this VR thing because first of all, they put the VR equipment on them. And then Tony was already seeing things and just, you know, saying, what is this thing I'm seeing? Miriam was like, I'm not seeing anything, no. The next thing, Tony shook and then Miriam jumped up and threw the stuff on the floor. I'm like, yo, these people, <laughs> Miriam, we want to spoil people's equipment. Later on, um, Tony now said, okay, let us be strong. The moment she said, let them be strong, the chair went up and then they literally jumped out of the chair in fear. They were scared. I don't even know what was making them scared. So, you know, it was quite funny to see. But later on, they now managed to um, finish up everything. And then afterwards, they now went out to have a conversation. Of course, conversations always happen. And Tony um, started off by asking Miriam why she's always causing trouble. And this is Tony that had not even heard the gist about what happened between Miriam and Chioma. She was talking about the club nine. She didn't know that another one had already happened. So Miriam now told her that, um, you don't even know that the situation at the um other the book reading was worse than the one we had before. So she now told um Tony what exactly happened between them. She said um, it's almost like they had it in mind already. They had it all planned out the, before coming and everything. And then she now spoke about what she told Chema. She told um, she told Tony that she said she told Chema that she's not going to be having um, she's not going to fight with someone that doesn't have a child um, when their children there. That it was her motherly instinct that came into play. You know, she just made it sound very, you know, very sweet. <laughs> and then Tony now thought that, that, you know, um, she was not asking her, like, oh, you didn't mean it in a bad way. And she was like, no, that she didn't mean it in a bad way. And all of that. Me, I'm like, there's no other way to say that thing that's not going to come out bad. I don't think there's a way to not, for that thing not to sound negative, right? So they just just said, just said, she gave her updates. Tony was just there looking at her. She didn't even... I feel like Tony does not have too much energy for certain things in this season. <laughs> She's just like, okay, let me just vibe. Although in the next season, I'll be the, sorry, the next episode they showed where Tony and Tony literally went physical with Miriam. But we're going to get to that. So we now had Faith's birthday party. So Miriam and Dr. Romer were the two people that were not invited for Faith's birthday party. I think I'm really happy that Dr. Romer was not invited because not seeing him in this episode was a breath of fresh air for miriam she was spending time with her international clients according to how she put it she was like she had a client over and they had like the eights and you know had um, a good time together and for faith for the birthday party faith looked really good she entered she went in with her son they were looking gorgeous and then the first lady that arrived that's after Faith was Laura. Laura was looking really amazing. Let's not even talk about the guys with oil all over their bodies. I'm like, which kind of oil situation is this? So, um, Laura, see, Laura did not come. This is the Laura did not come to smash. She's not smiling with anybody. She's on a slay vibe. She just came to slay and have fun. Her confessional look was so good. Like, the makeup, everything. She was just looking like, take away. And then we had King of Fashion. She arrived with her horn. <laughs> her horn in front of her and her son. And the way they were just bouncing in with their straight face, I say, ah, ah, Teno, you're a good actor. He was so really smiling, like he was in his model mode and everything. So um, they came in, um, what they call it, Tony and Faith, they now greeted, um, they took some pictures, herself, her son, Faith and her son, you know, they just took some pictures and yeah. And then the party had lots of celebrities, you know, just different celebrity um, appearances, different celebrities were there, some people are celebrities, White Money was there. I don't even know, I think I saw someone that looked like Messi. But yeah, and then after that, Stania now arrived and she had the oil guys help her, you know, pack her clothes. They help her pack her clothes. 
see eh, the oil that is used, I don't know what that is, I don't know what kind of oil that is shining so much, it's looking like palm oil because, <laughs> why does it shine so much, it's always like, they really, in fact, she shall came in, she had them help her with her clothes, and then when she came in, she was like, ah, thank God, I did not wear red, I, like, the decoration was like red and black, so she was now saying that eh, what would fit decorate the place according to the team or the outfit of the day, and then everybody would not be looking like the decoration. <laughs> so she was saying, Thank God she didn't wear red shirt. She went in, sat down, and then we had Derele as the MC of the event. He told um, Faith's son to request for anything. Now, what does he want his mother to do for him? He's giving Bible things. So like, what do you want? And then Faith's son and Toy's son, they were now talking. Tenno was whispering to Faith's son, you know, what he could ask for. The next thing is my kind microphone say that he wants his own Rolls Royce. <laughs> I said, what? <laughs> what are you even talking about here? Rolls, what? Anyway, I don't know. He can get it. Who knows? And then Laura was not happy at this point. She had been there for some time and Faith had not even gone to like greet her properly in her confessional she said that uh, they had greeted her from a distance it was this thing of oh hi hi i'm here and then she's like hey you know that kind of thing like you know not proper greeting but that is fine that is fate you know that more, more like it's expected of fate right so it's fate is fine and that she had fun i was like oh i'm sure she was really hurt by that because again Toy and Faith, the they were like they even took pictures together. They were hanging out more. Toy's son and Faith's son, they were hanging out together. They were sitting together and everything. So you know, that kind of thing campaign is more like how would I put it? It's almost like Toy and Faith are now closer, right? I don't know if maybe that got to Laura, but I'm just like imagining everything that was going on there. Toy and Faith, they were just like vibing and everything, and then Laura is just there. I thought we were supposed to be friends, kind of thing. Like, you know, that's what was just going through my mind. I was like, oh, um, that's not nice. And then after some time, Laura even left. That's to show that she was really not happy about the situation. Meanwhile, Faith went in to change for over two hours. According to Tanya, she said Faith went in and she was there changing for over two hours. People are there waiting. Are you inside changing? Which kind of changing are you doing? Big and then after some time, Choma and Iyabo did not arrive. They came together, right? Iyabo in a confessional said that um, the reason they came late, because they came late when the party was about to end. So um, Iyabo said that it was not intentional, that some things happened, and you know, Choma, she's going to literally like dress up for a long time. So it was not intentional, according to her. And then when they entered, um, you know, they just took some pictures and went to sit down. Choma said that the vibe of the party was weird that the colors are like somehow like it's giving she doesn't understand what it's giving right and they now went to see it fit and tony they were now on stage dancing tony went to spray her money so she was just spraying her money and she was dancing with her and vibing with her the other ladies were just bored <laughs> they looked so so bored like yo what is going on at this party um tanya was just on her phone and to be honest, me that was even watching, I was feeling what I was seeing what was going on and I was understanding where they were coming from because this kind of thing, there's a way you make people feel, you, there's a way you can make everybody feel welcome at your party, right? You're supposed to like go around, you know, greet, you know, just go around, greet everybody, knowing that, okay, these people, it took a lot for them to come here. But the way it was looking, it was almost like, um it was like a wedding where the bride and groom maybe, maybe they just have to sit separate from everybody and then anybody that wants to see them has to go to the stage or go to where they are it seemed like fate was just there on stage even when tony was spraying her money it was on stage that she was doing it so um, see at this point we can agree that fate is not good when it comes to hosting because now how much did it take to make up these days plus stylist i feel like she should have gone around greeted everybody and then you know maybe spend some time with the ladies a little bit or maybe not or whatever but just make sure that they are fine apparently it didn't look like that happened based on what we watched though maybe she did it later i don't know but they didn't show us that part yeah. and then um you know that was it for the power in Tony's confessional, she was saying that she, um, a lot of people misunderstand Faith and that for her, she has not had any bad experience with Faith yet. Like maybe later, she said, go collect. Maybe Faith will do her own later. But for now, she has not had that. And, you know, she's only seen the vibey side of Faith and she thinks she's cool and everything. And then they now showed us a snippet of what to expect in the next episode. You guys, like I said, Tony 
and um miriam they literally went physical don't even physical with miriam like they showed where she pushed her to like sit down what are you going to do i went to her face and everything i say hey, yo hey hmm okay oh. i can't wait to see what that is going to be like oh, because yo it's getting more serious by the episode this is now a physical situation where Popo, I mean, uh, Popo. This is the war fight that I Yabo and um, Caroline had that they went physical. They did not show us this time around. They are showing us. We want to see Shao. <laughs> I'm here to watch and give you guys juice. What else am I here for? So that's it for this episode. Just let me know what you think about everything. Thanks for watching and don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And I'm going to see you on the next one. Bye. Love you.